Now, I know what you're thinking. That is a stunning Sherpa hat you're wearing right now, James, on Hull FC TV, available for £19.99 in just about all Hull FC related stores. As well as that, you're probably also thinking, why on earth are Hull FC TV stood on the top of a hill in North Yorkshire when it's pretty cold? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because that man owns one of these. I missed it wins as well because that was a uh, red by missed it mate. You must be able to fit it in the door, surely. It's a nice one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, you laughing. It's doing an impression of you, I think so. My granddad used to take my sister and my cousins horse riding and stuff, but I was more interested in going and feeding the horses rather than actually riding them. And, you know, I'd just go around the stables feeding all the horses. But it was more carrots than polos. I don't know where the polos has come from. But. We're with Hull FC centre, well, utility player, Richard Whiting, uh, down at the Brian Ellison stables. Rich, because, well, you're a part owner of a racehorse. Tell us a little bit about this. Um, well, I sort of got into it um, when I brought my arm last year. Um, just sort of looking around on the internet. I've always been interested in horses and... Uh, I found Coast Racing Club website and uh, approached Christian and came down for a look round and got involved. This horse here is dream win. Question is, has Richard Whiting got the balls to come feed the horse? Apparently, according to the trainers, bites quite a bit. No. <laughs> In a word, no. What is it for you, that, like all these many footballers and football managers and dare I say, I believe a certain coach of Hulkingston Rovers as well, that shows an interest in horses? Um, I'm not sure, you know, it's... It's the, the, you know, they're pretty much near enough wild animals, and you know, it's going, going out, and when you see, when you see your own horse winning, and you're there and cheering it on, and it's winning, you know, it's, it's quite a good, quite a good feeling, and you know, I actually, I actually get as nervous going to watch the horse <laughs> running, you know, to, that's what I do when I'm playing now as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite strange, and I'm surprised actually how, how much I've got into it since, I, since I, you know, took shares in, into the horse. That one in the corner that Rich was just talking to, apparently he's got metal in his knee, which isn't too dissimilar to that bloke over my shoulder who's got a bit in his arm either. Your horse isn't here, is it? Where is your horse? It's having a nice little relax in the field because he, uh, he only ran four days ago, so uh, just having a nice easy day by the sounds of it. A bit like you after uh, a game at the weekend, I think. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. about right? Yeah, well, it's uh, our day off and... You know, it's, uh, I think it's nice to come down on our, on our days off when the when the horses are working, especially, and you know, just get out in the fresh air and, and see how the horses are, and you know, spend some time with, with Brian, the trainer, and Christian, who, who runs schools as well. And your horse is called what? It's called Dog Pen Ferryman. You going to introduce me? Well, yeah, we'll go have a look if you want. Let's go. Look. <laughs> I've got some. I've got some more. <laughs> come prepared for once. So this is Richard's horse, don't pay the ferryman, and like Mr Whiting, he's on a day off as well. Clearly enjoying himself by the looks of things. Always been interested in horses and horse racing and uh, looked into it a little bit because one of my friends, um, his wife bought him a lease, 12 month lease in one, and uh, liked the idea of that, but when I looked into it a bit more, um, you know, I thought actually owning part of one outright was a little bit better than having half an oof for 12 months. So. Uh, I've, since I've been involved in, since back end of September, start of October, he's run 11 times over all weather flat and hurdles. He's won, he's won five races out with that and placed four times as well. So, uh, you know, he's been fairly successful while I've been involved with him. Any of the boys interested? I've had a couple of them ask me actually, yeah, and you know, I've, I've uh, directed them to the website, but whether they whether they do anything about it or whether it's just bravado, I don't know. No, I'm not naming names. We found out this week that Sam Hobbs could well be interested in horses, but apparently that's an old wife's tale. That's well, apparently he's, uh, he's more interested in being a jockey than horses, but uh, I think that's probably a little bit of Mickey taking out of his size more than anything. So you uh, you clearly enjoy it, Rich. T tell us a bit about, I mean, have you been to a race meeting? Have you, have you seen the horse in action? Yeah, I've been to a few. Um, he ran just under two weeks ago at Musselburgh, which is near Edinburgh. Um, it was fell on our day off, so we uh, went in at 7.30 for a massage and straight in the car, straight out to Edinburgh. Uh, stayed at Musselburgh for two or three hours with uh, Chris and Zuska and Brian and Claire and uh, drove back. <laughs> Brilliant. It's, it's, it's really interesting. I have to say, we've had a cracking morning. Who, though? I mean, this is the interesting mix. We don't understand, as I'm sure some people watching don't quite grasp horse racing. Compare your horse to a player in our side. Who do you think it's like? <coughs> um, 
Because I'm told stocky and powerful, so I'm kind of thinking Tom Briscoe. And he'd love being compared to a horse right now, I'm sure. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, he's... Is is from what Christian and Brian told me from you know from watching him, he's got a real good temperament as well. So you know, probably you could probably compare him to Tom Briscoe um, in relative terms. Tom might be a little bit sharper off the mark, but um, you know, he's, he's a bit more of a stayer than a sprinter. So maybe in that that terms, he'd probably be more like a, a Danny Tickle or something like that. Well, there you go. That's something you didn't think you were going to get to see on LFC TV. <laughs> us comparing a horse to Tom Briscoe, more the point. That's a challenge we should set up. A horse versus Tom Briscoe over 20 metres. Not to be able to walk and beat Tom. No offence to Tom, but you know when when you they said it, you said it, mate. <laughs> when they get up to 40 miles an hour, mate, Tommy's got no chance. <laughs> I'm Brian Nelson, I'm a racehorse trainer. So I train about 50 horses and molt um, very successfully. We have a lot of winners and um, some nice horses. Um, we've got a couple of us to with, with big chances. So. I'm Christian Strangeway, I run Coos Racing Club, which Richard's a member of. Uh, we do syndicates, just do 5 and 10% shares, so basically anybody can get involved and they haven't got a big financial commitment, but still enjoy all the benefits of going horse racing as an owner. Richard White in Hull FC, um, part time jockey. <laughs> no, not really, I'm obviously. Far too heavy to be a jockey, but um, you know I got into the horse racing and really enjoy coming up here and going, going watching the horse run. Now we've met Richie's horse, so tell us a little bit about the horse, because um, we, to be honest, haven't got a clue. We haven't got the foggiest about horses. Very much. Young Peter, isn't it? Aye, brilliant horse. Um, I think he's won about five of his last seven, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. Um, consistent, tough. If if he was a rugby player, you would win him in your team. He's <laughs> hard as nails. Really good us. Chris, is it something you would advise people to get involved with? Is it something good to be involved with? Yeah, yeah, I think. If you've got if you like horse racing to start with, I think it just takes it to another level. You know, it'd be say if you're a big rugby fan, it'd be great to be on team coach, maybe or you know, have, have a day in the dressing room or something like that and see actually what happens, you know, behind the scenes a little bit more instead of just watching it from outside, you're actually more inside knowing what's happening. What's your knowledge on rugby league? And obviously, we're here. You're quite keen to come down and watch a game and, and see this thoroughbred in action. Isn't it? Yeah, well, that's the reason we'll come down to see him get mad. <laughs> <laughs> and he will. So good he is. He's good. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. <laughs> Love to find a performance to pull out. <laughs> So it's Richard Whiting's turn on Hull FC TV this week, and Rich, thanks for inviting us down to the stables, as what has been actually more interesting than I actually thought I was going to find. It's been really good. We, we've seen your horse. I have to say, uh, probably a little bit quicker than you were on the wing last season, and I guess on FC TV we do need to talk a little bit about rugby league. How did you rate last season for you? I, mean, I know we've just started this new year, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you are out there on the wing. You did pop up with a couple of tries you got one against Wigan I seem to remember you know in the corresponding fixture that we're about to go into this weekend how did you see your own performances um, I thought I, you know, I thought I started the season pretty well um, it's probably the best, better form I've had for the last few years but uh, no, I think once I got put on the wing um, I struggled a little bit for consistency I think probably I got fouled out a few times obviously playing out of position it was a, a new role for me and you know, I think my form showed a little bit because of that, but um, you know, overall, generally quite happy with the season until until I got injured. Yeah, it was a tough end to the year. You got yourself fit once again, and you spent most of pre-season playing in the centres, and then with the issues we had pre-season, you've been moved to fullback again. It's been a tough start to the year. How have you sort of seen that? Yeah, it's it's been tough. You know, we've last minute a little bit disjointed with uh, with players leaving, but you know, it's. You just got to get on with it, you know. I said to Richard, I'd, I'd do the best I could for him until somebody better can come in. You know, hopefully Phelps he'll be he'll be here, well as soon as possible. Hopefully, he's, you know, by the time this goes out, he might even be here. So you know, once he comes in, hopefully um, gives us a lot more options, and you know, Rich might stick me back in the centre, and hopefully I can go on a on a decent run again and get get my form back playing in the centre. Well, you're quite happy to be you to this man, but you have said that centre is the position you want to try and nail down. And to be fair to you, after a good couple of years, you've bagged yourself the uh, the number three jersey as well this year, which is a, a bit of a reflection of that. Yeah, but you know, it's it's all a shirt. You know, you know, you've got to you've got to play well enough to justify you know still getting in the team every week. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be people in the squad like John Turner, you know, Liam Cunningham coming through can play centre. Who, you know, if Richard puts me back there, uh, we'll be doing the utmost to, to take the spot off me.
Now Wigan this weekend, tough game, very tough game. Uh, as we've seen, you know, as I mentioned, that try he scored against them uh, last year over at the DW Stadium. Exciting game, very open. We possibly blew one or two chances, but it showed at times if you can let them get a roll on, a really dangerous team, and of course improved this year now as well. Yeah, you know, we're going to a great side, and they proved that last year. You know, going to the grand final and beating, beating St Helens, and you know the. the the quality of player that they've brought in this year is only going to, going to improve them as well. So it's going to be a big ask for us. But um, you know, we, we know what we've got to do, and we know that we're capable of doing it. We've just got to to turn up on the on the you know in the afternoon and give a good performance. And moving on, a couple of bits I want to mention. You've been coaching, obviously, it's something you're, you're interested in. You've been coaching with some of the club's youngsters. I know we've discussed in the past at times when you've been injured, you've tried to get involved a little bit with that and you've done video analysis and things. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role with the kids and, and is this something you're trying to, to build on to lead forward to something potentially if horse racing doesn't come off life after rugby league? Um, it's, uh, I'm in my second year now working with the 16s at the club and you know, it's it's been a good education for me really and you know I've probably learnt as much as what uh, the kids have learnt from me so yeah it's, it's been good and whether it's something that I'd want to do in a full time capacity I'm not quite sure you know <laughs> don't know whether I'd be able to cope with the, Too the, much stress. the stresses <laughs> of, of being a full time head coach of a club but you know it's definitely something to explore going forward once we, once we play in career finishes David, are you not into the parties that um, work the footballers in? Uh... No, we're not. Just because you're on camera, you don't have to give us like a walk <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm scared of horses. Why not you stroke it? Uh, horses, dangerous <laughs> creatures. Uh, they're up there with scorpions, snakes. Uh, and as well as having a successful horse, of course, final congratulations, because very soon indeed, I know I've seen your missus recently, she's, uh, she's got rather large, there's a, there's a certain small whiting on the way, isn't there? There is, yes, and uh, you know, we're both over the moon and, and can't wait for him to come, him, yeah. hopefully, no, we're not, <laughs> but he says they're not bothered. It's, you have to a little half back, No, no, it's, it's, been, it's just been a strange way, I've not liked to refer to the baby as it, so I've called it, <laughs> I've, been, I've been referring to it as him all the way through the pregnancy, so more than likely we'll have a little girl, but you know, we're not bothered either way, we know, as long as it comes and it's healthy, then that's all that matters to us. Well, I'm sure everyone would uh, join me in uh, congratulating you on that and wishing you all the very best, we hope your horse keeps going well as well, thank you very much for inviting us down. Uh, we're going to finish as, well, we're here to see a speed demon uh, in Ferryman, and we've had a cracking morning here, but I suppose we should show you another speed demon. He enjoyed himself last season out on the wing, and here's a few reasons as to why. What's good place to build back to Horn? Horn plays it back to Tansy, and Tansy to Richard Whiting! Whiting's in at the corner! See up the man over, but Tansy cuts back and field and finds Richard Whiting. Whiting away from one, away from two, and he's in for Hull SC. Horn, what's he going to do? He's going to put a chip to the corner, he's going to test Lou George. Richard Whiting puts him under pressure, the ball's come loose, and Hull SC fans are up on their feet. 15 metres out, he finds Luwaki who's on the pitch. Luwaki gets off to Turner, Turner with a superb offload on the back door to Whiting, who's in at the corner. Whiting, Whiting's in at the corner for Hull FC, and Hull FC are back in front.